Welcome back everybody. Today's video will probably be a part one, we'll see. But anyways, it is about changing out a hydraulic pump, in this case in an 1850, but it's gonna be the same in a 1750, 1850, 1950, uh, 2050, 2150, for the most part, and even the 1550 and 1650, there will be minor differences between each one depending on uh, the smaller frame tractors, uh, doesn't have the front transmission cover that's built into the hydraulic unit. Uh, if you had external lift cylinders, there's gonna be a few different things. But the basics are gonna be there. And this should give you a good idea of what to expect when you dig into it. And the first thing we want to do is get the hydraulic oil out. There is not much in this. If you saw the video where I was mowing hay with this and the hydraulic pump seal decided to give out. Um, Put a gallon in it just to get it to where I could uh, steer it and get the mower unhooked. Pulled it in the shop here. So I'm gonna pump that down by taking a hose with a hydraulic tip on one end and nothing on the other. Plugging that in, aiming for the bucket. Should really have a longer one. Uh, one of the things you wanna do in this situation it's impossible to get it all out. That's just the nature of the design we'll see in a little bit here. Uh, let your three-point hitch down before you pump the oil out because once the oil is gone, it needs the pressure to open up the safety equipment and everything in there, and the three-point won't go down once the pump is pumping air. So let your three-point hitch down. That'll get the oil out of the three-point hitch lift cylinder. One less thing to have oil slopping around on when you're taking things apart. And... Uh, and then pump her on down. So let's get her started up and do that. That's all the way down. pressure I was talking about that the Olivers have. The fact it wasn't pumping that out at an idle means the pump's probably a little on the weak side anyway, so it's getting a new one. I can see it's pumping air. If I was tearing this apart for something besides the pump, I'd shut her down right away. This one's getting a pump anyway, so I don't think I'm going to do a lot more damage than it already has. But that seems to be it. We'll shut her down before we break something. There was not much in there. All right, I'll let that drain while I get the battery on hook. Might as well take the battery box right off. It's going to have to come off. Um, get the question quite often about using a single 12 volt. I went that way with this. Uh, battery's a lot better back than back when these tractors were built. Um, so I do not have one up there. And that way, if a battery leaks, I can get new ones of these boxes. A lot easier to clean up. Try to buy a quality battery, but sometimes things go wrong. It leaks up here, it gets on the fuel tank, it can get into the dash. And so I've just opted to only use the bottom box here. It's time for that part. That part that's going to... Oh, the tears. As the paint flakes away. the paint it's holding it on there it goes all 
We'll go ahead and get this floor panel off. It's got to come up. This side has uh, bolts for the battery box. And I got the ground cable bolted in there. And then there's another one right back there behind the filter to take out. And then that'll come up. I'm not going to be using the impact very much because that's more likely to hit paint, scuff up paint. I got all those bolts. Oh, I forgot there is a up here. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, there's a three quarter inch headed or a half inch bolt down through here. I got to get out. So bad I like to take some of these bolts and put them back in their hole because it keeps let's see the short one was back here but that way I know where they are keeps dirt and crud from getting in the holes I don't have to think about which cup or whatever I'm not gonna do that with these on the top because they go, they hold the unit on, so they gotta go. And at some point, this one got stripped out. Someone drilled it and tapped it for the next size larger. I guess that works. Now this is basically a just a filler plate. I do believe there are speed nuts on the bottom. Let me feel around under there. No, of course not. I'll have to get an end wrench, probably to well, Let's see how well this is painted down. Not too bad. Before we go unbolting, we're going to get the springs unhooked. They've got a lot of pull against them. So they can be a little bit of a booger. Put the GoPro right, right in the way. All right, Chris. Let's see if we can record it from over here. There we go. One down. Oh, they're latched together. Usually off ain't as bad as on. You got to pull and twist at the same time. But while we're under here, we've got a bolt there, a bolt there, and a bolt there. Pretty straightforward. The fun part will be lifting uh, off and missing the brake latches. I could pull them, but we're going to try without. It'll work. It's just how much paint scuffing. see what we can do here. Oh, that wasn't bad. Not bad at all. This plug right here just goes right into the reservoir. I might pull that out and stick my siphon or my suction hose in there to try to get the last bit of oil out. Always seems like no matter how much you try, the pump doesn't get it all out. When you pull this up, you get oil all over. So I guess a little bit of paint damage there might be better than a mess all over the floor in the tractor. So I think we'll do the seat next. I'll get the back two bolts because they're harder to get to. Then I'll get these two. They're not super hard to get to. But might as well do the harder ones first. These front two holes 
go all the way through the cover. So I always put a, the bolts back in those. The back two are blind holes, but I still put the bolts back in them so I know where my bolts are at. But, and I also use these bolts as lifting points. So it's kind of nice to have the bolts there. Whoop. Oh, the paint ain't strong enough to hold the seat on. It's got my shirt. Gotta disconnect the three point hitch. I just pull this top pin. And uh, let it rest on the ground if I don't, you know, knock paint off or anything. Like so. Put that back in there so I know where it goes. And do the other side. Okay, I'm gonna get the remotes off. Normally, there's no reason you can't just leave the hoses hooked up and just disconnect your bracket somewhere or another and leave it, fling them up over the top, but I just see that chipping and scratching paint, so I'm, and I did put swivel connectors here, so the hoses will be pretty easy to disconnect and cap off. Then I can just take that off and be separate. Normally I'd just leave them hooked up and like I say, just set them up top, but not on this one. That wasn't so bad. Of course there's gonna be some oil. Even got the ones with the purple paint on them from that I plugged stuff off with when it was getting painted. And I missed the bucket. Go ahead and take this set of couplers off. These bolts have got to come out to get the whole unit up. So we'll take it off here, get these out of the way and do the other side. Okay, we'll get off the power steering line. That should be a 5 8 line wrench, at least to get it started. Especially, well, when you put enough layers of paint on, 5 eighths is tight. We'll use the most offensive weapon, I'm sorry, the most offensive tool known to man, the crescent wrench. Or the adjustable wrench, because crescent is actually a brand name. There. I'll find some caps for that. Well, since she's pumped down, this return line that comes, it goes to the, or basically comes from the steering. Steering goes to the cooler up front, then comes back and returns here to the reservoir. Three quarter inch line wrench this time. Destroy some more paint. All right, now, oh, we need to, Disconnect it in there to get it out. Otherwise, when you lift up, it's going to catch. It's just going to be in a way. 
I'll bend it. So let's see what wrenches I've got for that. Should be that three quarter inch line wrench on the inside. Once again, lots of paint. But hey, I'm getting the paint to come off. It's no match for me. Well, all right, I need both hands. I bought this uh, set off from, oh, I believe it's Amazon, but just caps and plugs for JIC fittings, but they're metal instead of plastic. Well, that's nice. They seal up good. You can tighten them right down. Cut down on the mess. Keep dirt out. I think that's the right size. There, no, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, no. All right, everything else is unhooked. That wasn't super tight. So time to get all these perimeter bolts off. Uh, one that sometimes is forgotten by guys, this bolt here and its companion on the other side there. Right, right there. They go through too, so they both need taken off. And there's a pair in the back that we'll get to. Other than that, it's just follow the edge around, take out all the 3 8 bolts. There are four of these 5 8 bolts, 15 16 head on each side, two on each side rather, so four total. They are a tapered bolt. They help uh, line everything up. Kind of secure it in place. From the amount of oily grease in those holes, I would say this has been off before. Who knows, maybe I did it. Let's take this long one off, maybe. Oh, I got enough paint on this one. The wrench ain't gonna fit it good until I get all the paint off. All right. Nice. See, that's a pretty long one. Reaches all the way down. There's a, as we'll see, the divider that goes through there and this bolts down into that. And behind the top link are two bolts that need to come out. 916 head, 3 8 bolts. I think I should have gotten the extension. The ratchet's close to the rest of it and scuff and paint. But here I am still doing the same thing. Get on there. Now most of you will find that your PTO lever is bolted here on the right side. It's probably loose. And you may have to pull the hydraulic lines out of the housing in order to get the bolts up on at least this back one. This has got the left-handed PTO lever option. This one being a 64. Um, so that kind of gets that more out of the way. One less thing to detach. I do have to watch these hose uh, fittings when I go up. I'm going to have to come over just a little bit. It should not be an issue. Let's see. I've got these two here. There's one more under the arm there. That should uh, be everything. Just walk around the perimeter. I got those two out. Uh, 
Those are all out. Hoses are disconnected. That's plugged off. I think I'm ready to lift it up. I'm going to use the cherry picker, partially to show that a regular cherry picker is enough to do it. Um, my A-frame's kind of trapped. And with all those chain fall chains hanging down, it could scuff paint. So this will work. Untwist that baby. Okay, uh, there is a dowel pin right here in this corner. We're gonna want that to come up with it. And likewise, up here in the front corner, so I'm gonna get my big wide chisel to uh, help separate things. Depends on who did it last. We would uh, often use grease on the bottom gasket so that if we ever had to work on it again, it would separate easily. And that worked, uh, worked good as far as keeping gear oil in where it needed to be. So let's get some pressure on her. Oh, I hear it separating. I see it separating. This is the part where I get my skinny, thin, or wide, thin chisel. And help it along. It's like delivering a baby. It could happen on its own, but no one does that anymore. Here comes the oil. I guess I should have opened that up. Hey, it's hitting the bucket. For the most part. There's a pan that separates the two, the top half and the bottom half. You want the pan to come up with the top half. Yeah, I should have taken that plug out. That plug I was talking about up front, but I tried my, uh, I got a suction thing that and it's not working. So uh, we're gonna let this go for a moment. Try to catch as much as it as much of it as I can. At least the paints had time to cure, and the concrete. got this corner coming up and the dowel pen as you can see is staying with it and I'm under the pan that kind of slowed down the flow because now it's tipping forward more sending oil up there let's see if we can't get that front corner out yeah I need to move some prying stuff around uh, let's see if I can't Get under that pan. Here we go. As you can see, got my grass gasket scraper. I'm poking in there. help separate the pan gasket underneath until I can get this bad boy in there there
you'll probably hear some clanking when I lift it up and all these uh, pry bars fall out. Just trying to get the pan gasket to separate so that this corner will come up. There it goes. I can hear it peeling up there. And it goes across the front here. There, I think it just let go. There. Okay, before we can knock that pan off, right there, you can tell this tractor sat for a little bit. That probably didn't help the pump situation either. Got to get these two bolts off because they're also holding the pan up. There's a seal in here. I got a new one of those. This is how it senses draft from the lower part of the transmission for your draft control. Um, I, probably, I think I'll knock that dowel pin down and then the oil can kind of drain out of that corner down there and try to get it emptied out. Got the roll pin out of that back corner. I'm going to take the one out of the, or not roll pin, dowel pin. And then I'll unbolt here since that's more in the center. That'll hold the pan up better. And this is pretty straightforward. You can keep it. There we go. As you can see, it's bigger on one end. The big end goes down into the transmission housing. Well, I turned on the thinking cap. I haven't had uh, one of these out in quite a while. And got this motor stand now, so why not bolt it to that? We'll just roll it over that way. Don't have to rest on anything. Bolt it into where the top link anchor goes. There we go. Now let's, I got the door open. Now the sun's out and it's starting to get a warm, but gives us some good light. There's our hydraulic pump and a three point lift cylinder on the internal lift cylinder. This, uh, this lift arm here will hit the back of the case, keeping it from going too far. But the ones with external cylinders, there's nothing. And trust me, I've broken before. These arms can keep swinging around and that a little aluminum link there will, will suffer the consequences. All right. Now I would say this looks like an up, or a newer style pump. I might be able to get that well without pulling the three point cylinder. Because if I do have to pull the cylinder, then I have to flip it back over and disconnect the uh, linkage going to the servo valve. And that involves taking the top cover off. So, I guess we'll, we will try it. Um, something I was going to double check, and it looks like it's been done, is, oh, earlier they had a cast iron uh, street elbow there. I think that's three-eighths. Might only be quarter inch. 
but this is a relief valve for the three point and why they have that on is once your three points set at height or something it the servo valve closes it off from the rest of the hydraulic system to hold its position well then you hit a bump and the whole three point inch arms go up and come back down and they slam that in push the piston and it can create a lot of pressure and uh, they found early like in the 1800s it could break this housing and so they put a relief valve on and that way you hit a big enough bump it just lets some oil out instead of breaking anything well they were using a cheaper pipe elbow and with a good enough shock they can break off or crack and then all the oil the three point can't come up because all the oil is just dumping right back into the reservoir you don't lose any oil but you also don't get any lift so if you had a sudden uh, shock load to your three-point hitch and now it won't go up chances are this is your problem this elbow here broke there's now a steel one or get a steel one or a heavier one than that cast iron uh, basic plumbing fitting and uh, replace it so I am going to see if I can finagle all this out of there without pulling the three-point lift cylinder i don't know it might be a tough one that bolt down underneath there seems like i've done it once. oh it's a little more accessible from this side seems like i've done it once before i think there's just enough room but i might eat those words they say expect the unexpected that bearing retainer is loose grossly but it can spin in the housing i'm gonna pull it out the bearing seems kind of loose too all that stuff wiggling could have uh, contributed to the seal failure oh yeah so i think it's all gonna come out and uh we'll see what we can do to make it better gotta get this back together for the daughter's senior photos i probably should have held off this front cover will come off and should be able to pull everything right out there and I'll show you something here in a moment. Okay, the cover is off. I just want to show you something here after I drop a couple tools. This is upside down, but this is a hydraulic pump. This was designed. Everybody look at the sky. Come on. Let's turn it easy. Where you could bolt another pump on the front. And then that's what this plug here this plug which is that one i was going to drain it from before upside down you could uh sump into the, your hydraulic unit with that go into here and then return to this port over here that's normally on the left but since it's on the upside down it's well still on the left from this side i have never seen one set up this way uh Oh, uh, old uh, Oliver mechanic I know, Oliver Guru, he said when they introduced the 1800s, they, I think that's what it was, he saw one set up that way. I think just as a demonstration purpose, but you could have dual pumps on them. You could even plumb it into an exterior tank if you wanted. And I gotta pick this snap ring out of here. It's those lovely kind that are hard to get out. And then maybe some uh, sleeve type Loctite will uh, secure that up. But I think I got another one. There's like a, this thing that's turning is just a spacer. But chances are the cast iron is what took the beating and not the steel. We'll see. But I did get the pump out. Um, took off the two bolts that went into the side of it took off the bolts slid it back then i could get the uh bolts that were down here if you got the older style pump with a cast part you're gonna not get that lucky if you do have to remove this uh three point hitch lift cylinder remember there's that bolt that goes in the side here by the just under the hydraulic levers that's for your single acting that we've discussed in other videos um you have to screw that out because that bolt's going in there to hold this check ball in there. 
So if you try to take it out without removing that bolt, it's going to hang up. And then it's just a matter of these three bolts, but you also need to flip it over, take the top cover off, and disconnect some linkage. You might be able to lift it just off the uh, dowel pins and slide it back out of the way a little bit, but um, I do believe this dash pod is not going to like that, if I remember right. So your best bet is to flip it and do it right. Let's see if I can hold this right, but... That's pretty much all on the balls that turn nice and smooth, but them, them bearings are loose. So they are going to get replaced because I'm sure that was not helping things any. Probably setting up a vibration. Could have been hard on that shaft seal. If she had trouble at some point, someone had to weld this up. I'll double check that and make sure it's not leaking, but it was holding oil fine right up until it wasn't. So... And then it would hold fine and it hold oil as long as it wasn't running. So I don't think it's the pan that's leaking, but we will double check it just to be sure. Get that rust cleaned up off from it. And I was glad to see there wasn't just a little rust, a little ding there. A little rust, but if you get water, this is where the pump sumps from. That helps keep like any water or dirt from getting directly into it. But if you get enough, it'll still suck it in. It's unfortunate they didn't have some way to uh, drain this externally. I'm not sure how the heck they would have done that. But I am going to see if I got some bearings. And also if uh, even these uh, spacers, they were just a little loose in there. Well, I'm living that charmed life. Because I go up and I don't have the bearings but the book says it's the same as a new departure 3206 which is right on the bearing there and then wrote on the parts card for it was uh, that it was see also 6206 and that made me think I just bought some bearings last fall for the combine and uh by golly they are 6206 rs um or dash 2rs ready to go 2rs which means two rubber shields which we can take care of that we'll just pick them babies out and then to make it even better I've got a new old stock, uh, one of these sleeves. This one that was towards the front was kind of loose in there. Oh yeah, that doesn't want to turn. I might still uh, stake the hole just a little bit with a stake with a punch, just to give it a little more something something, or maybe a little dab of uh, blue Loctite, or I don't know, it's probably never gonna be a part again. keep it from spinning but that's awesome I've got the stuff to do it got a little carried away scraping my gasket off but I knew I was gonna have to touch stuff up so I will I'll just finish knocking that through in the middle and uh, Get things cleaned up and ready to go together. Oh, that one slides on and off easy enough, but I got some Loctite in there, so that's just gonna have to set up. This new one's good and tight. And boy, that just took a wobble out of all sorts of things, so. Uh, Put a little of this sleeve Loctite on the outside and drive it in there and get it so that everything can get set up. She's in. Uh, even this new sleeve, it grabs the bearings tight, but it was uh, still sliding fairly easy in the housing there. Uh, put some uh, 
what is that 640 loctite sleeve loctite um i also hit it with the prick punch i was driving it in those little tits there but um this is just the sleeve out here and i didn't hit the bearing with the punch anyways put some prick punch the uh, outside of the sleeve and that really made it grab good so between that and the loctite i don't think she'll be slipping anymore that turns nice and smooth and no wiggle in it anymore so that definitely did not help the situation any having loose bearings there well that went better than i thought it would when that first come out i thought i was gonna have to be ordering bearings but these two bearings were uh, ordered them last fall for the combine i only needed two and i could buy four just as cheap as two and get faster shipping so i bought the four figuring well i'll have spare bearings and they were the right thing for this they were for the pitman arm or shaker pan shaker arm on the 8570 combine might let that cure before i try to mount the pump Plus, I think I have to find a new gasket for the front. The pump came with a gasket, which is the exact same one for back here. Pay dirt. Let me see how well I can zoom in on this seal. But I can see the rubber. Oh yeah, look at that. Let me get the screwdriver. Yeah, she definitely blew out the seal right there. So we have definitely found our problem. That's good. Not that we had a problem, but we found out what caused it. I can open this one up some other time and maybe all it needs is a new seal. Um, and then it can go into something else. Normally there's a hole. There's a hole right here that goes back to the reservoir. And if you look, you can see a line there it comes up and that's a vent for the seal area so that pressure can't build up behind that seal so it could be a piece of crud block that and blew the seal out it doesn't it turns nice I'm trying to feel if there's any looseness in the shaft if the bushing gets bad i can't seem to wiggle it any but i can turn it all right yeah we'll save that one who knows they might stop making pumps for oliver someday and that might look good enough <laughs>